Sup bros, so far we've covered Polaris, Ursa Major and Orion, but are there any more constellations in the sky of the Northern Hemisphere that we can use to navigate? Today we're going to look at the constellation of Cassiopeia, an obscure hipster constellation that gets no love, but it's just as valuable as good old Ursa Major. So let's crack on, we fire north with Cassiopeia in the Northern Hemisphere. Let's begin with identifying Cassiopeia in the night sky. Cassiopeia is composed of five stars, five very bright, very large stars. And it has two components, one narrow angle and one wide angle. Simple stuff, or acute and obtuse angles if you want to be a bit more fancy. And in this case, it looks like the number three, right, as a whole, or a wonky W. But it won't always look like this. Oh no. Like Ursa Major, Cassiopeia is a constellation that rotates around the North Celestial Pole. So you won't always see Cassiopeia like that free. Sometimes it will be on the opposite side of the sky and upside down in some cases. In this example it's shaped like a free, but when it's on the other side of the Celestial Pole it will look like an E whether it's up or down, an M, or a W. So you're looking for a big letter or number in the sky that can be broken up into a narrow angle and a wide angle, composed of bright stars nicely clumped closely together. Easy life. But what I would like you to do to get an understanding of the size of this constellation is to hold your hand out like so and extend your thumb out as much as you can. Then, just hold your hand up against the sky, and from the tip of your thumb to the tip of your index finger, that's roughly how large Cassiopeia will be in the night sky when you look up. So it's pretty huge. It's by no means a small, obscure constellation that you have to search high and low for. It will, most likely, be one of the first arrangements of stars that you see in the night sky, now that you're familiar with it. Very unique and very brilliant. So I do challenge you to go out and find it tonight or whenever the stars are out. It's so easy, even in towns and cities that suffer from a bit of light pollution. So now you know what it looks like, what it's made up of, and the size of it, let's find directions with it. So we have our two angles, our narrow angle and our wide angle. Think of these two angles as drawn bowstrings, right? Place an imaginary arrow in the center of these two angles and release both arrows. Follow their trajectory across the sky and the point in the sky where the two arrows collide is north. This point in the sky where the two arrows meet is directly above the north celestial pole. Turn and face this point in the sky where the two arrows meet and you'll be facing north. Polaris and the north star and the direct center of the north celestial pole just right next door, beneath it in most cases. Polaris is the brightest star in that region of the sky so when you're looking at the point in the sky where the two arrows meet you can't mistake Polaris for anything else. It will be right there staring you in the face. So there you go, you found North and the North Star with Cassiopeia, GG. And if we do that again, zoomed out this time so we can see the compass bearings, bam, right on North. And just below that point, if we activate the equatorial grid, North Celestial Pole, right there. Just a stone's throw away from where the arrows meet. And once you've found Polaris by using Cassiopeia, you can double check to see if you're right by finding Ursa Major, which will be directly opposite Polaris and Cassiopeia. Here's another example with a real life image. Here we have Cassiopeia and we can make out the narrow angle and the wide angle. From this point we just need to sling two arrows directly out of these angles, or drawn bowstrings if you will, and the point where these two arrows meet is north, and directly below this point in the sky is that big old bright star, Polaris. Nifty right? So a quick recap, a constellation about the size of your hand made up of one narrow angle and one wide angle, either orientated to look like a 3, an E, an M or a W. Memorable. By shooting arrows out of both angles, they will meet at the North Celestial Pole, directly above our North Star, Polaris. Well played. So it begs the question, why use Cassiopeia? Well. All the possible obstructions we spoke about previously with Ursa Major, trees being in the way, being in front of large hills or cliffs, or for those of you in lower northern latitudes where Ursa Major sinks into the horizon half the time, the sky offers you an alternative constellation to find Polaris. Because when Ursa Major is down, Cassiopeia is up. That's just the way it is. It's on the opposite side of the region of the sky that houses the stars of the North Celestial Pole. Ursa Major down here, Cassiopeia right up here. So at all times, one of the two constellations will be visible. Very handy to know. So that's that my friends, easy life. Let's play with some examples. The goal is to find Cassiopeia in the sky. 
these images are intentionally difficult as there are so many other stars in the sky but pro tip if you squint your eyes you block out all the smaller fainter stars so try that and I'll give five seconds for each image but you can pause the video if you'd like to spend some more time finding it Now, for maximum difficulty, next level Cassiopeia identification. Total utter celestial orgasm right here. So many stars that even our cheeky little galactic neighbour, the Andromeda Galaxy, is visible. So if you're not already full screen 1080p, then I'd recommend you do so because the goal is to find Cassiopeia. Good luck, so squint those eyes and clock the zigzag. 10 seconds. If you found that, then consider yourself the Cassiopeia master. But you can see the constellation is composed of pretty much the brightest stars in this entire image. So, big and bright, she's a beaut. If we were to then fire arrows out of each angle, we'd spot Polaris to the side along the way. But big old bright Polaris isn't in this image, so yeah. So now you know another constellation and how to fire north with it. Add another notch to the bedpost, and it's an obscure hipster constellation to boot, it never really gets much attention, and using it to navigate is a skill that's not particularly well known. So there you go, little bit of star knowledge goes a long way. But next up we'll cover one more constellation in the sky of the northern hemisphere that can direct us to our north star, Polaris. For now though, I'll leave you with a viewing of the stars of the north celestial pole, includes both Ursa Major and Cassiopeia, if you'd like to observe how it moves across the sky.